I don't know if any of you had the opportunity to watch the Spanish presentation today, but Annabelle did an amazing job, you guys. Amazing, amazing. And okay, Michael, there you are. <laughs> what happened to you? Yeah, I was just saying I knew Annabelle would be the type of person with all the Christmas trinkets and statues and things all over her house. Look behind her. She got like beautiful deer antlers. It Very is. nice, Annabelle. Very beautiful. And did you hear what I was saying, Michael? She did an amazing corporate Spanish? presentation, yes, today. Um, yeah, but you wouldn't know. You don't even speak Spanish. So how do you know it was amazing? Hey, I just know <laughs> that I know how beautifully she presents. I've I've watched and been a part of, you know, many presentations with her, whether they're yeah. English or Spanish. And I think the Spanish are even more beautiful because I, I just find myself mesmerized in, in the language. And um, it's just, it's beautiful when she presents. And, and this time she kept it to 25 minutes. <laughs> nice Yay, stuff. that was huge. Because I don't know, you guys, I get on Spanish presentations and I think it takes them about, you know, three minutes to what it takes one minute for us to say. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure why that is, but it's it's great. So anyway, it's welcome. All to about, it's all about the musica. It is. It's all about the musica. Yeah. Right, Bruce so, Bigford? Hey, it. well, let's go ahead. Thanks for uh, Hi, bringing, <laughs> bringing Bruce you. into the picture. <laughs> Bruce, where are you? I can't see Bruce. Bruce has got his, he his stockings hung on the chimney. Yes, I see him now. I'm here. He's there. So, uh, what's up? <laughs> I got oh. something else there too, so we'll see. I'll he show did. you soon. I'll show you soon. Oh, he got muted. I'm back. So you're going to show us like Santa coming down the Christmas tree? Uh, You'll the see. Channel? I got a surprise for you. All right. Well, I'm excited about this. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, welcome to uh, Z Family Night. Thanks for hopping on. Um, I know it's close to Christmas. I know you guys have many more things that you could be doing right now than being on a on a team call, but I really appreciate you being here. We, um, Michael has always said this in the past, no matter how close we get to the holidays, if as long as it's not Christmas or, you know, right on the holiday, we will have our calls because we know there are people out there that want to be on these calls. So we will have them. And uh, so, yeah, um, anyway, we're going to start off where we left off last week. I'm going to have a couple people come on tonight, a um, couple senior managers who I believe we, we all deserve to hear from. And um, the first one I'm going to bring on is since we just, you know, since Michael just happened to say, hey, Bruce Bigford, what are you doing there? So we're going to bring on Bruce first. <laughs> and Amy, you just hold on because you're next. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to hear from Bruce tonight. And Bruce is just an incredible human being. I am just so blessed to have gotten to um, know him in the last several months. This guy has um, has so many skills and abilities. And uh, I'm just just honored, like I said, to have met him and get to work with him. And I, th I think we, we are just definitely... Um, okay. We got some people unmuting. Okay. So yeah, we, we have become close friends and finally got to meet in, in Vegas and his heart is very, very, um, exactly how I felt over the zoom. He's just so giving, so loving, really wanting to, to help change this world. And you guys with, with that being said, I'm going to pass it to him because I don't want to steal any of his his thunder because I could share a lot of things, but I think a lot of it he's going to share. So Bruce, why don't you take it away and tell us about yourself. Tell us why you're here. Um, and yeah, whatever you choose to tell us about, we're, we're ready to hear it. You are on mute again. We might have to ask him to unmute because when someone else mutes him, that's what happens. Are you hear me now? Yes. Ah, uh, cool. Honestly, guys, I was a little nervous coming on here, but then it turned to excitement. I am so excited to share some things with you tonight, and I hope that I can touch your hearts and you can feel what I'm feeling. So I don't often get a chance to talk about myself, right? You know, you just don't go into that. But tonight I'm going to say a few things about my life, and I, and I hope you it resonates with you. Um, you know, I've had a great life. 
But I got to be honest with you. I've also had the ups and downs that everybody goes through. You know, it's uh, life is difficult, but it's rewarding. So it's got its good points, bad points. But, um, you know, most people, they have a, a life all planned out, right? They go to college. They, uh, they, they let's say they're going to go into financing. They go to college. They get into financing. They do that their whole life, kind of planned out how they're going to do their family. They retire. They have money. And then, then there's me, right? And I'm sure there's other that can relate to me. Um, my life was unplanned. Uh, I didn't have a plan. And it just unfolded as it went. And it was act it's actually an exciting way to go, but it's also scary in some ways. Um, but I want to start first by telling you about why I got into Transact Card. Um, I'm a friend of Dave Kahansky's, And I called Dave up and I said, Dave, what in the heck are you doing now? Because he's been in different businesses, is a lineman transact card, and I said, "What is transact card?" Um, and he says, "Well, it's a Visa card company." He goes, "I don't know much about it." And I said, "Well, send me a video." And so he sent me a video. I didn't look at it for eight days because I just thought, "Ah, it's just another one of those crazy companies." I'm not into it. All of a sudden, I get this little voice in my ear, and it says, "You open up that video and look at it." And I swear, after thirty minute video, this was me. What in the hell is this? I knew like that, that it was the business I wanted to be in, just like that. I got on a call with John McTillop, Aaron Whittier, and Michael Zapp. And I was so excited, Michael, will tell you, I said, Michael, I'm going to put 20 people in tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, I'm sure he was like, yeah, right. <laughs> But I have never lost my excitement. I got involved in June, I believe. So I've been here for a while. And um, and let me tell you something interesting. Dave said, you need to plug into this family. And I thought, no, nah, I don't need I don't need any help. I can do this. And so, again, that little voice came and said, no, you got to plug in. And I listened to my voice. Believe me. I showed up with a black screen in, uh, in uh, Colette's going, oh, we got a new member. I think there were six people in there, right? Like, what do I got myself into? Because I was there early, right? And so um, I showed up again on a black screen. And Colette says, oh, you know, we really like to see faces in here. And I thought, oh, man, I don't want to do that. So I put, a, I put a picture of myself in there, right? Colette goes, there's Bruce. We can see who he looks like now. <laughs> this is cracking me up. It's so... Uh, um, then I think it was Brian who said, well, we really, really like to see people come in live. So I finally came in live and Colette, I swear, I thought she was overjoyed, right, to see me live. And I actually unmuted and said hello and started that process. So and I've been coming ever since. It's the best decision I ever made. Let me just tell you a little bit about my my life. Uh, I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, my my dad gave me a great life. I mean, I mean, we had a, we lived, uh, we had a place out over overlooking Lake Mead with boats and everything. And I had a major love of boating. I had a major love to water ski. I was totally into skiing the buoys. I thought that was my profession. The rest of my life, I was going to become a professional water skier. We had a buoy course and everything. It was awesome life. I had a cer certain set of circumstances that came up and instead of doing that, I actually went to college and uh, I was going to become a dentist and I got accepted to dentistry. And I used to sit in my apartment, I swear, and I would read Income Opportunity magazine instead of studying. What does that tell you? So I didn't go to dental school. I, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. So I called my I moved to Salt Lake City and I called my mom. I said, Mom, can you loan me $2,000? I need a carpet cleaning machine. I'm going to start cleaning carpets. <laughs> and so I got that carpet machine in the back of my car, and I hauled off to some street, and I started knocking on doors. And they all said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got used to what a nose like, right? Uh, and so interestingly enough, I knocked on the last door, and I said, look, dude, I got to clean your carpets. I'll do it for 35 bucks. I need to eat something. I'm starving to death. So he had me in there and I, I cleaned his carpets and he gave me $35, man. I just hightailed it straight to McDonald's. I got two Big Macs, fries and a Coke. <laughs> it just it was, it was the best meal I'd had in a long time. Right. 
anyway, um, I, I actually then I uh, I actually went into um, and I, I don't, and this is gonna I'm I'm getting to the end here, guys. But I actually walked into an apartment complex and I said, "Can I clean your carpet?" And they said, "Yeah, but you got to become a leasing agent." So I became a leasing agent. I got my apartment there. I started meeting people and I loved the job. The leasing was fun. And then it spread out to other managers because they had manager meetings that, 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 that ran these apartment complexes. And as I got to know them, they asked me if I'd like to clean their carpets. And I said, sure. It just started a mushroom, right? I knew the right people and they were putting me in the right place. Then they asked me if I could replace carpet. Could I replace tile? Could I replace vinyl? And I said, sure. But here's where it went. I didn't know anything about it. Nothing. I didn't have a clue. Well, this is why I believe in a higher source, because about that time, some guy walks into my life and he's, he, 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 he teaches me everything there is to know about it. And um, I think I think within the second year I had gone. Well, I went from knocking on some doors to clean carpets. My second year, I was about five hundred thousand in sales in a year. I think the third year it went to a million. And by five years, I was doing all kinds of stuff. And I think it was I was doing about three million or more a year. Then, you know, it's not a huge company, right? But I had six crews and, and I was living life. Now, let me tell you something. I would rather play than work any day. I love life. I want to go play. So I bought a boat because I know I love water skiing. I bought I got a share on a houseboat in Lake Powell and lived there four times a year. I met a buddy who was an awesome fly fisherman, fly fished, did everything. But after 20 years, I literally got burnt out. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I got to do something else. I had a friend who invited me to Kiev, Ukraine. Imagine that, just out of nowhere. So I went down to Kiev, Ukraine, fell in love with the people, fell in love with that whole thing, and I was hooked. And I went, you know, I went to Europe. As I was doing all that, um, <clears throat> I did that for four years and just had a ball. I went to Moscow, was out to Siberia, St. Petersburg, saw the Peterhof, the, the Hermitage, everything. It was awesome. And uh, after four years, uh, it was time to put a stop to that. Um, I actually got married to my wife. She's from Ukraine. And I was grateful for that because that was one of the reasons I was getting burned out with my previous business. But when I came home, I got married. What am I going to do now? Guess what? I started a waterproofing company. I didn't know how to do that either. But guess the universe opened up and sent me the person in and taught me how to do that too. <laughs> so, you know, and it's, it's, it's pretty crazy, but um, I got good at it. Uh, I'm, I'm really good at it now. Um, and I started after about probably about five years. It was pretty hard the first three years. But after about five years, I was doing luxury homes. Uh, my, the biggest home I ever did was 54 million, 10,000 square foot deck. It's this thin, the material. We put it over this. We waterproof it. We make it real pretty. It looks like blocks and rocks. And you saw it. It's beautiful. I also started a company called Epoxy Dock. And I, um, uh, I sell that online, you know, epoxies and things like that. But guess what, guys? I freaking hate the business now. <laughs> I want out, you know. Here we go again, right? Third time's the charm. And that brings us to the beginning of the story where I, I want it to be. Uh, this is my business right now. This is my future. I'm going transact. And you can see that little guy right there. That's the surprise, Colette. That little guy keeps me excited and keeps me going. And I'm going to tell you that the that you guys that I met, I'm sorry for going so long. I just can't, I can't cut this off. I just want you guys to know. Hey, Bruce. Yes, sir. Don't apologize, brother. We're loving the story. That's thank right. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Keep, keep doing it. what you're doing. It's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, but what I've done to get to know you people, that's the real uh, that's the real joy, the right? Like Colette said, my heart is in it, not because of the money. Yeah, money's great. You got to have money. You want to enjoy life, right? I Like I want to. I want to travel. I love that stuff. But when it comes right down to it, as you see, I walked away from a million dollar business ways back. I want 
to help people. That's where I'm at. And I want to say that there are, and, I, and in conclusion, I, I kind of made some little note here. There's three things that I've learned from my life. I'm going to check this out. The first thing is we have to be fearless. Think about what I did. I went alone over to Ukraine and Russia. And, and I went out to Siberia on a plane by myself. I didn't even know the language. I learned the language. But I was fearless in that. And yet I can tell you I've had times where I'm scared to death. But we have to face it. We have to be fearless. That's how I got through it, is to be fearless. The second time, then the second thing I want to share, say is, for me, knowledge is power. You have to have knowledge. That's got to be your base. It's got to be how, how you're going to be successful. How can you sell Transact Card if you haven't shown up to these meetings and you, you don't understand the business? People are going to ask you questions and you got to know them. If you don't know them, you call up Michael or, or you call up Colette and you say, hey, I don't have the answer to this. How can you, can you explain it to me? Now you got the answer, okay? So for me, knowledge has always been the key. Look, look what I learned in all these businesses. I knew nothing getting into them, but I learned to be the best at it. And I did really well at it. And the last thing I'll say is that I believe that there is a, a source higher than, than all of us. And that source opened those doors for me. Who, who would have thought those people come into my life at the right time to get me set up and going? So I'm really grateful for everything. I am grateful to be here. I love you guys. And I can't wait to get to know you better and work with you in the future. We're going to kick some, you know what? And, and there's the guy right there. I love that guy. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bruce. Isn't he great? He's great, you guys. And And you just did what is the best part of this business, your story telling your story, you know, that's all you have to do. Be yourself, talk from your heart. And you're great at that, Bruce. So I appreciate you. And I'm so grateful to have you on this team. And I know you're going to do big things. As soon as you get that other business kind of shoved out of the way. <laughs> I know, I know this time of year is, is busy for that. And I know, you know, <laughs> Michael, he kept coming to me saying, I'm going to do it, Colette. I'm going to do it. Don't give up on me. And I'm like, I never gave up on you. I, I know you're going to do it. So He's going to do great things, and and he's he's a mover and a shaker. So so excited. Yeah, and Colette, I just want to say thank you to you because you always believed in me, and that's powerful. And I that's the point I wanted to make. You are that that when you have someone that believes in you, it just tugs you along, man. So that's a great example. I need to do the same for anybody else is to be uh, to believe in them to be there for them. So thank you for that. I appreciate you a lot. You're very welcome, and and there was no denying it. And Michael did that for me in our last company. So um, that's why I'm here today, because he believed in me. I, I I mean, I had belief in myself, but I didn't even know what I was doing. But he he saw something in me and, and uh, you know, pushed me out there. And that's what we're doing with you, Bruce, pushing you out of the tree. It's your turn to be on the screen. And, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Awesome. OK, thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to switch over. I'm going to pass this over to Trish DeMarcus so she can introduce our next speaker. Mm, hello. I am super duper excited to um, introduce Amy. And Amy, I never, I always butcher her last name. So I just always call her Arizona Amy. She's from Arizona. I met her in another um, company. She had never done sales. And um, she's somebody who, she just gets relationships. Honestly, she connects instantly with people. She can talk to you about anything. And actually, she's one of the bravest women I know. And that's because she's off in Arizona. She had she had, had um, someone join with her. And she just realized that team and meeting in person and doing presentations was really where she was going to succeed. And so imagine being by yourself in a city and not having a leader. You have to be the leader. You have to build in your backyard and show up. And she decided to do it. And she put a message out and she gathered all the DBOs in her city, not on teams, anything, because we all are transact card. And she put it out there and she gathered all these people and made a commitment with them. And they're locking arms and they're going to have presentations every week. And that is so unbelievably impressive to me. She's truly stood up as a leader, something she's never gotten to experience and just she just did it. She pushed herself and I'm so proud of her. And I, I want to hear really from her, her experience, but also 
yeah, how was that? How did you decide to do that? What made you push forward in that? So Amy, we'd love to. Well, I knew this was coming because Colette gave me a heads up actually last week, but um, uh, I kind of got lucky in a way because we ran out of time. So I was like, yay, gives me some more time to think about it. However, um, here we are. Wow, you guys, thank you so much, Trish, for that introduction. Um, transparency, full transparency. I, I'm i not a network marketer. Uh, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, did I think this was going to be an arena that I would get involved with? Absolutely not. However, what I could tell you about myself is I love people. I love talking to people. I've always had friends. Um, I It's always been very easy for me to walk into a room and just meet anybody. Um, let's fast forward. I'm going to be 50. Uh, I'm 54. I'll be 55 this year. And where, where has this brought me? Transact card. Um, all this connecting with people and talking to people and feeling comfortable with talking to people, um, I really think is going to accelerate, um, my business and me being able to learn and absorb everything that I'm, I'm, I mean, it, you guys, I'm so blown away. I, I am so happy that I found you all because um, I think this is exactly what I needed in my life at this time. I've been looking for something for a very, very long time. Um, I haven't been satisfied. Now I'm happy all the time, which is crazy. I wake up with a smile on my face. I do love my life. I love my family. I love my friends. Um, there's not too much I would change, but I there's something inside me that just feels like, what am I missing? So... Um, I met Trisha and Lacey through another company. They are right. Um, the part of the company, so it's health and wellness. Um, I love the products. I'm going to continue to take them. Um, they've done me well. Um, but I I didn't, I wasn't about the recruitment part of the business. That, that wasn't me um, for my own reasons. There was a sector of this, the business that, I wanted to do, and it just wasn't working out with my schedule. So instead of frustrating myself and feeling like, you know, upset that I couldn't make it work um, because I, I own a small residential house cleaning business, I decided to kind of tap out, still, still take the products and be involved. And of course, remain great friends with my mentors, uh, Lacey and Trish. Um, but um Coming back to Transact Card, I'll never forget this because this has been a really, really rough year for me. Um, I lost my dad in March um, and we were like this. So it's been a really, really hard hit. Um, I also had another um, family member that's kind of went to the wayside and has been struggling, kind of had to deal with that. So I'll never forget Lacey Johnson, who is my sponsor, who's on here. Love you. Love you, Trish. Um, called me. The night that I was packing to take a take a trip, and that was June sixth, and said, "Hey, would you be interested and open to looking at something?" And I'm not going to lie to you; it's nine o'clock at night. I got to get up at three a.m. to take a five o five flight out of Phoenix to go to Panama City. I was checked out. All I kept on thinking about is I want to be on the beach, and uh, of course, you know, tons of credibility with me. Lacey did, and I said absolutely. And I remember packing, you know as on my, on my bed, packing everything. And I'm playing this video. She sent me going, okay, what, what am I going to get myself into this time? And I just kept on hearing like little words that were resonating with me that I was like, oh, and then I'd look at the video and then I'd, I'd stop. And then, but I really had to take my phone, sit on the edge of my bed, play that video and completely focus on what this was all about because I I did respect her and I wanted to give her my honest opinion as she asked me to. And I don't know what it was, to be honest with you. I don't know if the what the word was, the phrase was, but what I do remember that night was it was kind of like the fear of missing out, FOMO. I had FOMO. It felt so right. This was something I've never heard of. It it felt like it I, I, like I, I got to be on the ground floor of this because this made sense. And I didn't even understand what it was. So I remember calling her up. It was probably like 930 at this time. And I said, I, I don't even know what I looked at, but I like it. There's something about it. I got to get involved. And I go, what do I got to do? And so, of course, you know, she sent me her link. And I said, OK, I you know, grabbed my credit card. And I'm like, 
I, but I got to be honest with you. I said, I'm on vacation mode. I said, I probably, you probably won't even talk to me for like a week. And she's like, no problem. I'll fill you in when you get back. Perfect. You know, that's how it worked. Well, unfortunately I got back and, and another, uh, pretty, um, uh, major thing happened in my family. Um, a secondary second hit for the year. Uh, but you know what? Hey guys, this is life and uh, things are going to continually to happen to us as we get older. I'm no different. We all go through it, but um, I locked myself around a lot of support, but I, I, I really struggled. So it probably wasn't until end of July that I really got to focus on what this was all about. And then I started getting introduced to the players, Michael, Colette, the rest of the team, and just really kind of like, you know, put their arms around me and said, and I, and I chose to, to get myself involved. And I was like, wow, this is so special. Like, this is going to be amazing. I, they, they, all they had to say was boo to me. And I was in because they knew it. They knew what was going on. I felt the passion and all of a sudden the light bulb kind of went off of my head. And I said, this is exactly where I kind of need to be. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm capable and once again, it's kind of embarrassing to say I was doubting myself. I knew I could do it. I know I can do it. But what I knew I needed is I needed to learn and I needed the nurturing and I needed the training. And then I knew that once I felt comfortable with, enough with that, I, I would be okay. And fortunately for me, I locked arms with uh, with my, my girlfriend, Joanne, who felt it too. And I swear to God, I tell Lacey this all the time and Trish knows too. I'm like, if it wasn't for them, I probably couldn't do this on my own. But then I also got another person and she believes in it just as much as I am. And it doesn't matter if we have two people or 500 at this point, we're going for it. We're going for it hundred percent. So um, I want to thank everybody on here because this, this is definitely, like I said, something that I needed uh, in my life at the time, but it's also something that resonated with my heart. I truly believe this is going to help so many people. And I've always put everybody in front of myself. And now it's time to do both. It's time to figure out how to blend those together. So it works for not only myself, but everybody else. And uh, thank you for your time. Amy, I just love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Okay, what did we do in here? Unmute myself. There's, there's all kinds of new things with Zoom these days. They just flash up. So yeah, I, I just love your energy. I um, I resonate with you. And you guys, tonight she said, when I texted her beforehand, I'm like, okay, you ready to go on tonight? Because like she said, I asked her last week too, but we just kind of went over time. Um, and she said, yeah, but she goes, my story is nothing like the rest of them. I said, your story is awesome. It, your story is your story. And that's what it's all about. We all have a different story, why we got to this point. And so I'm um, just so happy to have you on this team. And, and you guys, she's a rock star, star. And one of the things that I want to point out that she said, and if, I'm sure you heard it, but she locked arms with a friend. She locked arms with a friend who's there in her local town, which is what I encourage all of you to do if you can, because once you have that friend, it makes it so much easier to start going out and, and doing what she's doing now and having those um, in your backyard meetings. So keep up the good work. Oh, and, and Colette, can I just say one more thing? I never answered what Trish actually said about, you know, all the other DBOs. So really quick, how that happened is um, there was a post earlier on about um, who's in Phoenix. And I had said, hey, I'm in Chandler. And several people, um, there's Steve Harrington's in Mesa. He's on this call. Um, Steve is a, you know, I just want to acknowledge Steve. So Steve is a great example. Steve is is not on our team. We're hoping to maybe get him on our team. But he, um, I invited him as I talked to Colette to, to make sure that it was okay. And just so everybody knows, like Colette said, absolutely, because sometimes people don't get the right support. And she said, we are all in this together. And I remember last week, Steve was on the call and Steve said, oh my gosh, this is my tribe. And once again, I'm just reiterating the fact that this, this team is, um, is powerful. They care, they have a big heart and they're willing to help everybody. And of course, I've talked all of you all up so much that 
there's there's no doubt in my mind that if I brought anybody in here, whether they're on the Z team or not, they're going to get something. And in the big picture of life, we all are part of the same team, which made me respond. And we invited a bunch of DBOs. So there was 11 DBOs from the Phoenix metropolitan area that came. And sadly enough, many of them don't have support. Um, they've reached out to their uplines. They reach out to their VPs. They've reached out and... Um, you know, Michael, you said last week, you know, sometimes don't, um, you got to be the person, you know, don't de be dependent, but like for myself, when you're, you kind of don't know <laughs> how to do this business, you still need to be plugged in. So I'm so grateful. Um, when I talked to Colette and she said, bring them in, don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are because technically you know, that that's that's the vision and that's the heartbeat of this company is we're all working together. We're all working towards the same goal. So whether they're in Z team, team impact, Larry Lanes, Liz, it doesn't matter. Um, mentorship is mentorship. And if people accept you the way that you need to come in there, you know, that that's so rewarding in itself. So that's what I chose to do. 11 DBO showed up. We're going to start committing to do uh, presentations every Saturday um, starting in January. So we're going to have another meeting probably next week. Not with everybody, but we're just going to try to figure out the schematics of how it's all going to work out. But bring them all, you know, let's let let's see what happens. Not that I'm bringing them all on here, but bringing them all to try to build Phoenix. So however that however that's going to look. I love it. I love it. You have something to add to that, Michael? Because I know you always talk about building your backyard and and I know that's your your um <laughs> that's where you started. You know, we didn't have all of this other than your <laughs> so I don't do it as well as you do, but <laughs> you, do <pretty> good. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, building your backyard. Go ahead, take the floor. Yeah, no, Amy, first of all, congratulations on, on gr bringing that group of people together. Whatever's going to get you in action, that's what you got to do. And our doors are always open here, just so you guys know, we're not going to shut anyone out. If I had that kind of mindset, I would have never met Colette and we wouldn't have a team right now. I would have shut her out right away. But when I met Colette, I knew she was powerful and I knew she didn't know this industry and she didn't know what she was doing as far as she never had mentorship. So I was prepared to help her regardless. And then it just so worked out that she sent a really uh, powerful message to our last CEO and said, I want to be up under Michael's team. I want to be in there with him. He's taking this thing to the moon. He doesn't need me, but I want to do this with him. And it was such a, it was such a really cool part of mine and Colette's story that we just instantly became great partners, just like you got a partner locally there in Arizona. So keep rocking and roll at the end of the day, when, when, uh, the tide rises, all the ships rise. So that's something that you got to understand about this business. When the tide rises, meaning when everyone starts to find out about Transact Card, everyone's business is going to grow. And um, yeah, so I'm really proud of you. Great job. I, and I could pop over to Arizona. When you get 50 people in the room on your team, please uh, invite me over. I'll fly in there on my own dime and come to a presentation with you. Let's rock and roll. Colette will be there too. Absolutely. I keep saying, bring me to Arizona, especially yeah. right when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like middle of January, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I promise I will not bring you in in July or August. You got yeah. it. Otherwise we'll be in, indoor and in a pool all the time. We can present from the pool. It's all right. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Awesome. Well, thank you yeah. so much, Amy, for, for telling your story. And, and you guys, these, these stories are powerful and I, I really want to get to know each and every one of you um, on this screen. And as we grow, you know, just just vice presidents and, and senior managers, please reach out to us. Let us know that when someone's ready to um, talk, because we don't want to hold anyone back. And there might be that leader that's being squashed down and, and not not bring into the forefront. And we want to make sure and, and recognize them. OK, thank you, Amy. All right. So now. Um. I wanted to talk about a couple things and, and welcome, Steve. I saw your message there in the chat. We're, we're just so, so grateful to have you here. And, and I know um, you have the passion that we all do as well and, and ready to share about Transact Card. And, and, you know, just like I was with the last company, if, if I didn't have someone that was willing to teach me and share with me and let me in on their team, I would not have continued 
you know, I would, I would have been gone. So I understand exactly where you're at. All right. So what I want to talk about a little bit tonight, um, before we get going here, I want to keep it to, you know, 45 minutes or so, but, um, just want to share one of the things Aaron Whittier shared last night on, he, he had some questions and answers. And I, I want to just touch on, on a couple things that are, I know, um, probably uh, coming up a lot in your life right now with Transact Card. And, and one of those is, you know, where's the bank? What's going on? Da, 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 da. Well, let's slow down and let's be patient. And let's also realize that, guys, we get to help build this thing. It's not built yet. By us being the pioneers and the founders, we get to help build it. And so we need to just be part of the building and not part of the tearing it down. Right. We want this to be a very strong foundation and we want it to be really, really strong by the time it gets built. So we all have to remember that we are part of the building and be strong, be patient, know that it's coming. We've only been going for about seven, eight months now. And what this company has done in that period of time is short of miraculous. I mean, we have done so, so much. And, and so that gives me very strong faith knowing what this is really going to be like in a couple of years and just think 10 years down the road. So just, just that word patience. Remember there's, you know, this company doesn't have a roadmap. This has never been done before. It doesn't have a roadmap. It doesn't have the, um, the playbook, as Aaron said, we're, we're building the playbook on, on our own. This is like starting football before it was ever here. Think of, I always think of this, you guys on games and stuff. I'm like, whoever invented this? Well, it's probably someone like Michael Zappia because that guy invents everything. Even if it's a game that's invented, he's got to add his own rules, just so you know. <laughs> he does it all the time. <laughs> so I always sit there and think about things like that. Oh my gosh, who invented this game and how did they come up with all the rules? And how long did it take them to come up with these rules? You know, it's still evolving. Football is still evolving. They're still adding rules, which I'm not always fond of. And I know Michael's not always fond of. Many of you probably aren't as fond of those rules that they come up with, but we are in the beginning and there's going to be many rules added time and time again. So I just ask for your patience and um, realize that you are part of this. When you jumped on this early, the beta test, beta, beta part of this, you agreed to be part of it. So remember when you're getting stabbed at all the, with those arrows, just remember it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be great. Um, I've added a couple things here. I wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, just slow down right now. If you're, if you're finding that it's too much for you, just slow down. Enjoy Christmas. It's going to be here when you come back. It's all going to be great. So, Michael, I know that you have been parts of um, startups before. So if you, if you have anything to add to this, please do so. Yeah, I, th I think your your words and your leadership are incredible. Colette, I love where you decide to take the, uh, the energy of this conversation of things being in the beginning. You and I were speaking earlier and you're like, Michael, it's only been around for nine months. It's like, <laughs> like we're creating this whole company and people are getting a little bit uh, impatient and it's been nine months. Like, And I told Colette earlier on the phone when I was I think I was at work or driving home. I can't remember Colette when we were talking. You're getting I, gas. <laughs> yeah, I was getting gas. I invented a game 15 years ago and I still haven't completed this simple online game and turned it into an app. So anyone who's ever created any kind of company before, like Bruce Bigford just shared with us his amazing story of, I love Bruce's story, by the way. It was so cool. It just, and I knew this from the moment I met that man, when we got on a call, I felt an instant kinship to the man. I just, the conversation just was perfect. It flowed perfectly. He told me his background and what he's done. And I've never done this networking thing. I said, well, you've done other things successfully. Guess what? Success leaves clues. Everything you've done in your life is going to equate to another successful venture for you. So I have no doubt Bruce is going to be one of the top people in this company in the coming years here. I, I really believe that because he's been there. He's done it. Didn't know how to do floors, learned how to do floors, didn't know how to lay rugs laid rugs. But um, yeah, you know, what I've been thinking about lately, Colette, is I, and I've been writing a lot. I don't know if everyone on the team sees my posts when I, when I'm inspired to teach something, either I'll either flip on the video or I'll, I'll start typing and writing. And I hope you guys can, can get something from that information. But in the beginning, it's like that analogy of pushing that snowball up the mountain. And as it starts to roll, it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you got a couple other people helping you push, but it's hard to push it 
up the hill. You know, even even with Colette, with a, a team of 1,500 or however many people it is now, pretty soon we won't mention numbers anymore. It'll be, oh, we're at 100,000 people. Wow, that's great. No big deal. Um, but with about 1,500 people behind her and working with her and pushing that snowball up the mountain, it gets a little bit easier when there's other hands pushing, but it's still going up, right? And this thing is going to go up, 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 up for a little while. And there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be challenges every step of the way. Um, but you know, like my first mentor told me, and it's the only reason why I'm still with you all today is I had a mentor that came in early in my career when I was this close to quitting. And he said, Michael, the secret to the business is sign up and don't quit. He even looked at me one day, Colette, and he said, I've met guys like you before. He goes, guys like you, you know, you, you speak well, you look good, you're young, you're in great shape. You got the world by the, you know what? He goes, guys like you, I've watched guys like you quit when it gets too tough. And he challenged me in the beginning of my career. And boy, was he smart to challenge me because I'm the type of person that once you put a challenge in front of me, I'd rather die than not succeed. It's the truth. I'd rather die than have you prove me, prove to myself that I'm a quitter. And I stayed in this profession. And even when Colette brought this to me, I got to tell you guys, I didn't. I didn't want to do another business. I was months after having my chest cut in half and take my heart out and put it on a table and cut a vein out of my leg and repair my busted heart from years of stress and working too hard. And Colette brought it to me and I said, well, I'm not a quitter. You know, I'm at a point in my career right now. I'll be darned if I don't have another big win in this industry. I'll be, I'll be darned because I know it's out there. And I just don't believe in quitting. So here's the good news for all of you. When that snowball gets to the top of the mountain, and I can't predict when that's going to happen. It could happen maybe Christmas next year, Colette. Do you think things could be running smoothly by Christmas next year? Can this company create a serious momentum? By, and just so you know, Christmas next year, year will be here before you know it. I don't know if all of you have been paying attention to what's going on in our world today, but time is going faster than it's ever gone before. It'll be Christmas. I like, I can't believe it's been a year plus since I had open heart surgery and almost died. Like it, it went by like this next year, Christmas will be here before you know it. And where the heck will all of us be? And where will our teams be? And where will our business be? But the cool thing about this profession, and I only experienced it once and it was enough of an experience for me where I said, I got to have that again. I just, I got to feel that again. It's when all of a sudden, it seems like everyone you talk to already knows about the business we're building and that momentum hits. And at that point, that snowball that we were all working so hard to push up the mountain, now it comes flying down the other side of the mountain. And that's what you call momentum. And if you guys remember, I, Colette, I almost bought my son a... Um, a um, sled to go sledding because we got snow up here in Santa Fe. I was just at uh, Target before. I was going to buy him a, a, a um, sled to go sledding. We've never done that. And I, you guys know how much fun it is to go down the hill on a sled when you're seven years old. I want him to feel that excitement. I want you as adults to feel the excitement you've never felt before. I guarantee nobody on the screen has ever felt momentum in this kind of a business. But when it happens, you'll be, you won't believe how exciting it is. When your group grows from 100 people to 500 people, like this, from 500 to 1,000, from 1,000 to 2,000, even right now, Colette is starting to feel a little bit of that momentum happening in her team and her business as it grows from 1,000 to 1,200, like this. It's exciting times for her, but we haven't come close to what it's going to be like in, let's say, a year from now, or maybe even two years from now. The question I have for all of us is, are you willing to stick around long enough and keep pressing forward no matter how tough it gets. As long as this company doesn't quit on us, you don't quit on the company and you never quit on the team. Nobody can ever quit on this team. We're a family now. But as long as the company stays in business, we stay connected to them and we support them by doing what? By going out there and believing in their mission and their vision, as Colette was alluding to earlier. This is a time to be a part of the building, not the tearing down. I loved the words she chose to use. They were poetic. This is time to build it up. Be careful. Every word that comes out of your mouth needs to be an edifying word. 
Nothing you say can tear it down. Not even to your friend. Like, God, this transact card's a pain in the butt. Can you believe we don't have our cards yet? I tried to do that flash sale. That woman I saw on Facebook got that 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 uh, blanket before I got the damn blanket. This is a scam. I'm out of here. I want the plushy blanket. No, you can't. You've got to build this thing up. And I think you're doing an amazing job, each and every one of you on the screen. We wouldn't be here without all of you taking our calls in the beginning. And it keeps trickling down now. So step into your leadership role. Colette, take it away. I love that. I love it. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have much more to add to that, Michael. That was great. Um, that's exactly, you took us right to time. And uh, we have, I know you have another call coming up in a few minutes and you probably want to grab a bite to eat. I don't know what your night's been like, but um, we'll go ahead and let you go and we'll let the rest of the team go. You guys, we're getting close to, to Christmas. Just keep on plugging in when you can, plug in when you can, and we'll be here. Okay. So we'll see you on Saturday. Have a great night and we'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you so much, Amy and Bruce and anyone else that gave their energy tonight. Trish, Michael, love you guys. Take care.